So yeah, I'll, I'll be as uh, quick as I can, but I'm going to demo um, a new module of the platform, which is LLM Power, that we call Digitize. And it's a new foundational component in the application, which allows you to create this foundational risk object, which is really the starting point of the digital risk flows that the panel were talking about earlier. Uh, and uh, one of the interesting things about Digitize is that you can use this uh, outside the context of what we call workflow. So it could be used to power uh, a variety of use cases um, in a much more simple fashion. And we started building this module about 18 months ago in the platform. Um, and it really coincided with this technolo technological shift that was described earlier of generative AI. And around about the advent of GPT 3.5 onwards, we sat down and thought, Blimey, this is, this, this is going to be game changing and we really want to make a big bet on this next wave of technology. And we basically sat down and wrote a list of things that started with what if. What if you could extract almost any data point from any document simply by describing your output data structure? What if you could get high quality predictions without requiring any training data? And I'm going to quickly demo the platform through the lens of those what ifs. Now, a digitizer is basically a small API which has a configuration, which we call a schema, uh, which controls how the uh, incoming um, packets of data, it could be submissions, it could be claims documents, uh, get digitized. And these are like mini APIs that you can call uh, to digitize um, these incoming submissions. And what I'm going to do is just for the speed of the demo is I'm going to process a, um, a submission in live in the platform. And it's going to be on the subject of cyber, um, a completely synthetic, fake company, I think, uh, a NetGuard uh, cyber liability insurance application. Um, and we're going to basically process that to a configuration that we've got in the platform. Uh, all of my demos are live, including the last one I did at Google, which actually went wrong uh, for two minutes uh, when I got my uh, like JSON syntax wrong in, in our advanced editor. So uh, since then, we've developed this very nice visual editor, which allows you to interact uh, with the platform without requiring any kind of coding or, or kind of technical knowledge. And this is another of the what ifs really. So we really wanted um, to design the platform so that the interface was natural language. What if you could extract almost any data point or classify any file simply by describing it in natural language to the platform? Uh, and so what we're going to show is how you can get high quality predictions with no training data. That's really the big advantage with these generative pre-trained models. Um, how you can um, interface with the configuration simply through natural language. And late, latterly, how can you update your configuration simply by changing your schema and then rerunning submissions through the platform. So two digitized actions that we're going to demonstrate. One is file classification in here. So this is relatively simple. We basically said at the top level, is it an application form or other? And these have uh, names and descriptions. So the descriptions is basically how I would describe to my wife what it means to be an application form. And the interesting things is you can start to nest these classifications. So for example, if it's an application form, I want to subcategorize it into a cyber application, a property application, or other. And in fact, we have some customers that go three levels uh, deep, and we'll show you that shortly there. Um, and what we're also going to do is we're going to extract some data. So I've just chosen three fields which show uh, the platform off in a, in a different light. A couple of standard uh, data points, insured name and insured address. Once again, just a name and a description. Uh, and down here, we've um, utilized a data set that we've called Dropdown uh, to extract some of this risk information that James referred to earlier. So um, this is actually a customer, maybe Beasley, who asked the question in this way. Um, this customer said, I want to know if the applicant applies critical and high severity patches within 30 days. But importantly, for this process of digital risk flows, uh, you need to make sure that the model returns an answer in a format that you can use downstream. So irrespective of all of the different formats that you can actually ask and answer the question in, we want the model to be constrained to say yes, no, not applicable, and unanswered. Those are basically the options that we gave. So we're going to come back into what we call our training interface and see the output of the job here. And here, unsurprisingly, I hope, uh, we now have a prediction for the file classification. It's the two-level classification. So application form cyber, and shortly the document will load in here. And we also have this human readable explanation. So it's a kind of gen AI type feature. The doctor's an application form for NetGuard plus cyber liability insurance, et cetera, et cetera. And actually for um, people who interact with the platform, this kind of human readable explanation is really useful because it provides a logical explanation as to why the model made the prediction it did. Even if you disagree with it, you can understand why it did it. I'm going to confirm that file type, and we're going to go to the screen where we have the extracted data. On the left-hand side, we have um, the data which we described, which is the name of the insured, uh, the insured address, and uh, an answer to the question, 
do you apply critical patches? To the uh, point about data lineage, if I click on one of these um, sources, which is the source values that the model used to determine the final value, it will navigate you to the, word, the, the, the document, the page, and what we call the word blocks, so the specific parts of the document it extracted the data from. And one of the most um, significant um, performance improvement, uh, improvements we hear from the front line is the ability to navigate documents quickly um, with this da data lineage. Um, and here we've got the address here, so it's spread across multiple lines, and we have those extracted as a single field here. Um, now, the interesting thing here is we wanted to know whether the applicant applied these high, and, um, high severity and critical patches. The answer to the model, the model gave us was yes, but the source value was four to seven days, uh, which is quite interesting. And if you see here from question M, there was an analogous question which was asked slightly differently. So the question was, how frequently do you install critical and high severity of patches across your enterprise? The answer which the model selected was four to seven days. But because four to seven days is within 30 days, the answer that the model provided, which was yes. So this is really demonstrating some of the reasoning capabilities that these models have in the platform um, and allow you to have this harmonization to a common schema, irrespective of how brokers uh, or customers present the risk data to you. Now, very quickly in terms of what if, I'll run one more uh, risk very quickly. What if you could update your output simply by updating your schema. So instead of up updating your schema and having to lab label ten tens of thousands of examples, could you get different outputs simply by updating your schema? Common things that we get is, uh, in our system, address is stored as street address line one, city, state, zip. Um, how can you deal with that? Well, previously we would have done lots of complicated post-processing or trained a specific model, but now we say, don't worry. We're schema driven. All we have to do is update our schema. So we update um, in short address from a text field to a group, and then we just basically add our attributes. So this is going to be street address here. So it's going to be the street address of the insured. Let me try and copy and paste this quickly. Um, city, this is quite a common one. You get this also with um, things like legal names, DBAs, trading names. Uh, we're going to have state. So this is going to be the state of the insured. And uh, zip. Uh, so this is going to be zip code or postal code of the insured. And let's just add a new field. Uh, with, let's say it's going to be the insured website. Uh, and the important thing is this could be however you want to stretch it. You don't have to basically accept any kind of common models anymore. So the uh, website of the insured. We're going to click save, we're going to update our configuration, and we're going to basically run a new job through the platform for uh, us to basically see the output as well. And then I've got two final quick ones where uh, I won't run the risk through the platform, but I'll channel my inner Steve Jobs and try and show off the capabilities of Gemini with uh, one more thing at the end. Uh, so perhaps we'll come back and look at this one here. Um, Processing quite quickly here. So basically, when it's processing, um, it's gone through basically our file processing, which is a foundational service, which gets documents LLM ready. Um, and then this is basically calling Gemini now um, to, in order to get the predictions back to the schema which we specified to the model. So hopefully, Gemini will be nice and quick for us. And really, the speed of processing is relatively quick, but it's generally a uh, factor of the size of the documents, number of documents, and the size of your schema as well, uh, because the models have to generate these output tokens on this side. Um, but we can come back and, and, and hook into this one. I just wanted to show you another couple of ones, couple of other ones. What if this also works for images and um, uh, as well as text? Uh, so we have a multimodal example here where we um, specified a schema. Uh, of um, animal or vehicle, or person and vehicle, and we classified vehicles into cars and vans, and then we said, does it have front damage, rear damage, or side damage? So this is a th an example of a three-level categor categorization here. Uh, wouldn't it be amazing if this was also multilingual? So earlier today, I don't speak Spanish, but I did use Google Translate, and I wrote a schema in Spanish and sent it an English document, which is the one which I showed you there and I still get predictions back, but in the source language. So in this case here, this is actually application form cyber in Spanish. So this allows you harmonization on an international level. This is the same data points here extracted, but instead of yes, I have C, and four to seven days is the extracted data here. So you can actually have a common schema in a common language, 
uh, that will actually uh, have the semantic understanding cross language. And last one, because Matthew is going to look at me again very shortly. Um, would it be amazing if this worked cross document, but also worked on handwritten documents, but also able, was able to use the context of the whole submission to correct uh, issues with extraction of handwritten data? And if I look at this one here, we're going to uh, have a look at a different schema with different file types, so loss runs, supp supplementary forms, etc. Here's an output of uh, an email which contains multiple documents. So in this instance, it has um, these predictions coming in now. So we have an email body. We have a loss run, once again, synthetic data, a cyber insurance application form, and we have a supplementary form, which is a payment card supplement form, so a, um, a double level. Um, and in this instance, uh, for, for some fields, we have um, source values across documents. So in this instance, the insured name was contained in the cyber application form, the loss run, and also the supplementary. And interestingly here, the OCR was incorrect, but the model was um, intelligent enough to select Yale Electronics LLC, even though it used a source value which was slightly different uh, than the actual values that you saw. And that is a whistle-stop tour of the platform. And I will just very, very quickly come in here and hopefully just show you the final job that was completed here. Um, so here, as you can see, we updated our schema. We now have the address parts extracted individually, so city, state, zip, um, and the street address. And of course, we have the insured website. So apologies, Matthew, quickest demo I've ever done. Thank you very much. Thank you.